I'd like to start this Thursday me Thursday's meeting of Pray It Off by asking the group to join me in an Our Father. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And I ask the group to join me in the Our Father tonight, because I want to emphasize the words that our Lord Jesus gave us to say. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. It is an instruction right from God. We're going to talk about anger and forgiveness because it's directly related to weight loss. It's directly related to our Christian journey. Love, anger, and forgiveness, how to let go and be emotionally free once and for all. This is a beautiful article. There's so many good articles, I'm begging you to go home and read them in their entirety. This is by William DeFore, PhD. Anger has to be understood before you can forgive. If you're, if you're not forgiving someone, it's usually because you're either hurt or angry. Usually you're angry that you're hurt and you can't forgive. And here's the key that I want to say that means so much. Forgiveness is for you, not for the person you're forgiving. Because they might not be sorry, they might be dead, they might be in another state. And here's another thing, forgiving yourself is for you. What we need to do in everything in life is take our own responsibility. As an adult, if someone hurts us, we've got some responsibility there. We can either remove ourselves from the situation or see what we might have done to provoke that situation. If you are an innocent child and someone has harmed you, where is your responsibility as an innocent child? But as an adult, if you're still holding on to the anger and the resentment that someone hurt you as a child, this is what I'm talking about, that we need to forgive for ourselves so that we can go forward. Stop saying, you know, if that only hadn't happened to me, I might have had this in my life or that in my life. We, there is righteous anger. When, when Father Pryor did a beautiful sermon this past weekend about Jesus overturning the tables and, 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 and the money changers, and I thought he made it so clear for the first time for me that I was like, wow, I didn't realize that they were you know, bringing their pigeons and being told they were defective and having to buy other pigeons and, and having their foreign money and not getting a good exchange rate. But I think in the black book, if anyone reads the black book, they had an interesting description of that also, is that Jesus was saying, I'm taking away the old to bring forth the new, which is me. And this is where we have trouble with the change. Sometimes we're so used to the anger. Anger's an old friend. Oh, I'm having a good day. Hey, what about 1970 when they did that to me? You revisit it like that bad tooth you're always touching over and over and over again. To let it go once and for all. And here's another thing that we do. We pretend forgive. Pretend. We say, oh, I forgive them. But inside, you're still holding on to that anger. You're holding on to that resentment. I'm very guilty of that. I'm very guilty of pretend forgiving because it sounds good. Oh, I, I forgive them. I forgive them. No problem. But inside, I'm going, oh, I can't believe that happened. Oh. You know, and I, I don't even realize that I pretend forgiving until I revisit the hurt and I get angry about it. When you truly let it go, what is it, everybody? Gone! 
If you're letting it go, it's gone. You don't let it go and then tomorrow you let it go again and then you let it go and let it go. You've never let it go if you have to keep releasing it. Here's what we need to do is get it out of our bodies. Get that anger and resentment. And you might be sitting in your seats right now saying, you know, Ellen, I'm not angry about a thing. I have no one to forgive. My life's really been perfect. <laughs> I invite you to call me because I want you to be the guest speaker next <laughs> week. Okay? If you can do that, I want you to t share that with the group. Because I don't think, and then even if you might say, well, you know what? Not me, but someone hurt one of my kids. <laughs> That's where, you see, a lot of my righteous anger was when people were doing things to my sister. When we were growing up and people were shoving her, calling her retard and knocking her down. And then here would come Ellen, barreling through, grabbing the collar. What do you think you're doing? There's where my righteous anger, how dare you harm the defenseless? How dare you? And to this day, see how I get, see how that, let it go, Ellen. Let it go. And you see, I don't hold those kids responsible anymore, but it's, it's like even now there's someone very close to me who had to leave high school because they were being bullied. 2012, when this person told me that, I wanted names. Who? Who bullied you? Because I'll find out. I mean, this is the same person who my daughter was playing basketball. Did I tell this story before? I mean, this is bad. She's playing basketball. She comes up to me crying. It was co-ed, holy family. She goes, this boy, he said I was fat, and he said I was a loser. And I go, which one? So I waited. <laughs> I waited. It's fourth grade. Fourth grade. I waited till he went to the drinking fountain. I'm kind of, I was even bigger then. I went up behind him hovered behind him and went, excuse me, you will not say one word to my daughter again. As a matter of fact, you won't ever say a bad thing about anyone ever again because she'll have to answer to me. Do you want to answer to me? <laughs> no, no, I don't want to answer. <laughs> the kid's like 30 now and he still looks like this when he says, <laughs> he doesn't want to answer to me. He does not want to come near me. But that's what I mean. Righteous anger. Touch my kids. Touch somebody I love. Oh, you don't call me fat. So what? I didn't care. But there's hurt there. I might not have a lot of resentment, but I might have some hurt. Like, no one asked me to the prom to the last minute, and I think one of my good friends had somebody ask me. I would have been the most fun date there. So I go back to my high school reunion, and everyone's like, oh, Ellen, you're here, you're here. And I want to say, why didn't you ask me to the prom? I would have been a fun date. You know, so I have a little hurt and a little resentment about that. And guess what I have to do, everybody? I have to let it go. We hold these things in our bodies. For two years, I've been working in a very difficult situation. Isn't it funny that the second I went to work at a difficult situation, my body stopped losing weight? I was doing good, doing good, doing good, doing good. And it's taken every fiber of my being not to gain. Not to gain weight. But now, I've, I've, uh, on February 20th, I took another position at the company, and there's, it's like so less pressure, and the people are nice, and it's a couple bucks more an hour. And all of a sudden, I'm feeling better. When we're in a stressful, when you out there who have those stressful jobs are wondering, why can't I lose weight? Because you might be angry at the situation. You might have trouble letting it go. We need the forgiveness and the acceptance for ourselves. And here's something else. When someone you trust, when someone you love betrays you in one way or another, a child, spouse, family member, a very good friend, that is so difficult to let go of. It's so difficult to forgive. When you're a child and perhaps one of your parents has an addiction, perhaps it's alcoholism, and they come home and they're, they're drunk and they start beating the crap out of you. As an adult, you look back on that and you say, you know what, they weren't well. Alcoholism is a disease. Then you gotta go to the next step. 
I forgive. I'm going to let it go. Anything in your life, someone, I, I always say about the kids, because any of us who are parents in this room, when something happens to your kids, don't you feel yourself bristling and, and waiting? Now, I do think we over-defend our kids a little bit. Like if a teacher calls me up and says, I want you to know, you know, what, what Vincent did, I'm like, what do you do? And then I don't immediately go, well, I'm sure you did something to I mean, there's the, the 2012 parents think their kids do no wrong. If my kids do something wrong, oh, they hear about it. Don't get me wrong. There's, there's not perfect uh, uh, ab absolution on their part. But if someone's picking on them or, or making fun of them, I just feel like that's where we have that, that ability to want to go in there and save the day. Moving from anger to forgiveness isn't easy. And you know, it might sound a little new agey, but what we tend to do is say, I'm angry, I let it go, and then we don't really. And these articles give us exercises. And you know, I really tried this. I sat in the chair at my office at home, and I remembered the things of my life that I constantly revisit over and over again that I get hurt and angry about. And I examined each one, and I said, you know what? I see my responsibility. I see, and I'm going to let it go. I'm going to forgive that person. I'm going to have it blow away like the breeze. Am I there yet? No. I'm a work in progress. This, this, is, this is a very sensitive subject for me because I stink so badly at it. And that's why we've talked about it several times in the group because it's not, it's not easy to lose weight. It's not easy to forgive. Why do you think we go to church all the time and say thee our Father? I have a very easy time forgiving certain things and other things. Uh, I find I have what's called a heavy dose of subjective normalcy. What that means is that I look at the world according to Ellen. Ellen does this, and Ellen would always say thank you, and Ellen would never do that. And that's, that's the way it should be. And when someone does not fit that little Ellen mold, I'm like, what? You know, they didn't fit my mold? Well, I'm hurt, upset, whatever. That is not a very good way to look at life according. And then you might sit back and go, well, why? What I'm, what I'm saying is right, isn't it? You know, and then it's like, this is a bad example, but I, I want to give it to you. I sell on eBay. I used to be an eBay power seller. And I stopped doing that, and now I work. But I still sell on eBay. They give feedbacks. Am I, am I, have I stopped? I'm going to stop. Yeah, I'm going to stop right there. Thank you, Bob. Bob gives me the high sign.